Hello everyone. Today I want to talk about filters again. If you are following my channel for a while now, you know that I like to use polarizers, but I also like to use GND filters and there have also been two videos already on my channel where I was talking about how to combine polarizers with GND filters. So there was a video where I tried to combine them with a normal screw-on filter, but recently I found out that I got strange polarization effects if I was putting my Lee GND filters in front of such a polarizing filter. So I ended up switching to another system where I have a huge Lee polarizer now in front of the filter holder. So it's the first element and behind it I then would put the GND filters. And this system solved the problem I was showing, the problem with the polarization effects. But yeah, now I have this huge setup and when I just want to photograph woodland or waterfalls, I usually don't want to use GND filters, so why would I use this huge setup? So I ended up always bringing also this small screw-on polarizer, which I then would use for photographing waterfalls. And yeah, I always try to simplify my equipment and I have to admit that this sit uh, setup isn't very simple because I need two polarizers, then this polarizer is very huge and it just uh, didn't fit right into my workflow. So it was also always a bit awkward working with this huge polarizer and also my leaf filters they I think I have them now for six or seven years so they're made of resin and they begin to get some scratches so they were very good now I needed new filters anyway because of those scratches so I had to look around for alternatives and I came across this Casa system here and it's called the K6 system and I purchased it because what it does again it tries to combine polarizer with GND filters in a way where the, the polarizer will be behind the filters and I also purchased the glass MD and GND filters from Casa the Wolverine series and when I have them all in glass this should also not introduce any polarization problems which I was having with the resin filters. So what's this system about now? First you get this little screw on. This is the adapter ring. You know this if you are used to other filter systems you always have a adapter ring and for Lee I was using the wide angle ring and this one here is similar, it's very thin and once you have this adapter ring on you just put the filter holder in front of it and so the nice thing about this system is it's a screw on system so you have a little screw on the side and you screw it on and then it's very solid so you don't have yeah to be anxious about your filters falling off or yeah I always was a little worried about this clamp which was used by Lee. It was very fast but it also sometimes felt a bit awkward. So I like this screw on first of all. But what would I do if I wanted to combine it with a polarizer? So let's remove this again and also the adapter. So what comes with this K6 holder system is a very thin polarizer and let's just try to get it out of this so this filter is very thin I would say it's maybe half the width of a normal screw-on polarizer or even less and yeah what you do with this you can basically screw it into this adapter let's just try this so I've not done this very often and have to still get the hang of it. Let's 
So there must be a trick somewhere how to fit it perfectly. So once I have this in front, this is basically the same as a screw on polarizer. I can just use it as it is. So if I was shooting waterfalls, wouldn't need GND filters. I was just, I would just use this one and I'd screw it again in front of the lens as I did before and have my polarizer solution, which is very nice. But when I want to use NDs or GND filters, I could just use this filter holder and put it in front of this system here. And now this complete system allows me to put GND and ND filters in front of the polarizer. And if I still want to turn the polarizer, there's a little, a little wheel on the side of the holder. And when I turn this, the polarizer turns. So this is a very neat uh, system and yeah, I can wait to put it to test. So what I now do is I'm gonna head out and do some tests with the ND and GND filters. So basically just comparing them to the leaf filters quickly and see if they're also very, yeah, if they don't introduce a color cast and that they are neutral. And I'm not shooting very scenic landscapes today because I don't have them here, but this is just the first test to see if the filters behave as I expect them to be. And yeah, later I'll from now on bring this system onto my travels and yeah, there will be additional videos where I will use this and yeah, then I can also tell you the experiences I have with it. So I'll have this close to the coast where there's a lot of spray. I'll be, yeah, I'll have to wipe these filters a lot and stuff like that. So I'm very looking forward to see how this system behaves. And yeah, for now, let's head out and first see how it's with the color cast and yeah, do some very simple comparisons. So I've now come out into the countryside, not far from where I live. And yeah, as you can see, there's not much around here, which is also the reason why I usually have to travel a bit farther for my photos. But for this test here, it's perfectly fine. Also the gray sky is quite ideal to check if those filters here produce color cast. What I now do, I take a few photos first with the Kaze GND filters, then with the Lee filters. And yeah, we can later com compare those in Lightroom and see if any of those produces a color cast. So let's start. So I brought the photos taken with the different GND filters all into Photoshop and sliced the images you, so we can compare them. On the left, there's the photo without any filters. Then we have the Casa 0.6 hard edge, then the Lee hard edge, the Casa soft and the Lee soft here. What you can see is that all the photos where we have a filter in front of the lens introduce a slight color cast. It's not very much. The filters are all very good, but it's noticeable. What we see is that both Casa filters seem to lean a little bit more into the cooler colors or introduce a bluish tint while Lee seems to warm up the image a bit and we can make this all visible by using such a special layer and here we can see that the Casa hard edge goes a little bit into the blues and it does so across the whole frame. Same for the Casa soft edge and here on the right side the Lee soft it's warming up the image so there's some kind of a reddish tint and i think here the lee hard edge has the least of a color cast to it but it's also a bit noticeable but for all the filters it's not very much so if i remove this enhancement layer you don't see too much of it so all filters are very good in terms of color cast but a little color cast is present since it's over the complete frame, it's usually easy to remedy in yeah, Lightroom, for example, by adjusting the, the white balance a bit. What I also notice is that the Casa 0.6 Heart seems to be a touch darker than the others. 
So I didn't test how much exactly, but it could be 0 0.2 stops or whatever. So a little bit darker, but also this doesn't bother me too much and <clears throat> shouldn't be a problem in an actual shooting situation. Let's now look at what the Andes do. So here I have to the left side the photo without any Andes and then both Casa and Lee 0.9 so making it a three stop and what you now see for those here is that here it's the Lee which has kind of a greenish cast to it and the Casa is perfectly neutral so you see no matter what filters you buy you can always get slight casts and color but again even for the Lee it, it wasn't very bad I could just adjust the white balance a bit and get rid of it and as you can see here for the Casa I think it's perfectly neutral. So now let's look at the effect of the polarizer. So here's the photo without any polarization and here I introduced the polarizer. So you see it does a very fine job here also keeping the colors very neutral as before and getting rid of the reflections here in those little puddles. So polarization works as it should. Now let me quickly show you how I made those casts visible so you can better put this into perspective. And you might also use this for your own filters so you can check um, if they have a cast. So the first thing I did here is I used a layer, a new one, which contains 50% gray. And I set this to luminosity. So normal, it's just a gray layer. And once I set it to luminosity, the leftovers are the colors. And then I added a use saturation layer where I brought up the saturation very much to really enhance the color shift. So normally you wouldn't see much of it, but once you bump this up, you can make it visible. And this also shows you that it's really not so much of a color cast here, but I wanted to make it visible anyways. So now you know how to do this. And if you want, you can do this for your own filters, just out of curiosity, for example. So after looking at the filters now, I can say they perform very well. So there was just this little bluish tint in the GND filters, but it's so minimal and easy to fix in uh, Adobe Camera Raw or Lightroom. And if I hadn't the normal photo to compare it, I wouldn't have noticed anyway. So it's not a problem at all. And you could also see that for the GND filter, the three stop, there's no cast at all. Whereas I had a cast for the leaf filter. And honestly, I have never noticed it before. So color wise, the filters are very good. Also, this system now that I have tested it the first time in the field. I have to say I, I like it very much and also the screwing of the polarizer worked much better when the holder was attached to the camera. So I get used to it already. And yeah, this system feels again very solid and easy to use. And yeah, I'm looking forward to use it in an actual yeah, shooting situation where I have a sunset and where I have to work a little faster. So yeah, it's gonna be interesting. But for now, I think it was a good purchase also. Those filters are glass filters and usually if you drop glass filters, they break. But I've seen some videos on YouTube and they claim that those filters are very robust so they won't break. I obviously, I won't do this test myself because I usually care a lot for my equipment, but it's good to know that they should hold up to a little fault. So that's nice to know. But yeah, for now, I really have to wait to shoot with those filters a little bit more. And yeah, then I can do a little follow-up video and tell you what I think. So see you.